fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't want people to fill in the blanks. Because then they're like off on a tangent and they're arguing this point. It's like, guys, we're way over here. That's not, that's not what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we are recording. Um, This is Something in the Wild, episode 11. I'm here with Tim and Diane. Appreciate you guys joining. They're part of the um, Friends of the South Park Buffalo. And that's where we're at right now. Um, obviously you can see in the background that we have the, um, famous South Park Buffalo Reserve. Um, and for fear of misinterpreting anything, I want you guys to do a lot of the talking here and kind of spread the story of why, why you guys are so passionate about this. Um, you know, what drove you to do this? Why, um, what the issues are. And I want to first start off by, you know, letting you guys explain who you are and, um, you know where you're coming from so go yeah. ahead well, tim foster and diane foster um we're the we're the founders of the friends of south park buffalo preserve um we really got involved it's interesting because a development last year is what got us involved with the buffalo um you know i, I was i was an attorney with consol energy i was arguing subsidence all the you know the road issues the bridge bridge issues but you know one of the questions that we had is what impact with all the clearing, the logging, the construction, the noise, the vibration, what impact that would have on, on you know, the buffalo. So we came up here, we met with the caretaker. Uh, he said, you guys want to come up and meet them? And we're animal lovers. And so we spent some time with them. We went to a few more. And then we just realized there's some things I think we can do. Yeah. You know, there's some things that we can maybe do with some of our relationships. Uh, you know, we had a, Diane had a relationship with a, you know, a grocery chain. And so we talked to them about getting some supplemental, uh, you know, fruit and veggies for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we always do our homework. We went to some zoos and we, you know, met with the nutritionalist to find out what they were doing. And it was really the concept of trying to get, uh, rep- you can't replicate what they get in the wild. Yeah. So it's, it's trying to supplement the fruit, the, the you know, <laughs> vitamins, minerals, proteins, minerals, uh, fibers that they're going to get in the wild mm-hmm. with with the fruit and veggies. Okay, so you guys got started here last year whenever there was a proposed development. Yes, the Red Rock uh, uh, high density townhomes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And um, so the issues at hand right now, we're talking about a proposed development about what? What would you say? Right behind your shoulder, four hundred yards yeah. that way. It's five hundred miles, um, and, and unfortunately, the developer. Uh, misstated that to, uh, to mm-hmm. the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what he was talking from. From where the houses are going to be, the closest point to that corner of that fence right there, you know, where the buffalo are is 500-some feet. I think it's 560 feet to be exact. Oh, okay. He said 1,600 feet. Mm-hmm. 1,600 feet from where the houses are going to be takes you almost all the way down to Corrigan Drive. So I don't know if he doesn't understand where the buffalo are mm-hmm. or it, it was just trying to trying to mislead people. Yeah. But that's – Wrong information. Yeah, so you're you guys are trying um, actively right now. There's the, um, you know, obviously the the uh, case with, or I guess um, we're talking about the board of um, the board of South Park. You know, they meet and they they're planning out these developments and stuff like that. Yeah. What is your guys's role in that process, and and how are you kind of combating that? Um, well, we, we, we tried to take an active role since last year. Um, I really wanted to get moving. Um, you know, w- one of the concepts certainly was with the uh, Allegheny Land Trust to step up and purchase the land. I talked to the landowners. I, I was friends with Gary Carmen, who unfortunately has passed away, uh, and then with his wife, Joan, at the meetings. And, you know, one of the concerns he had is, you know, the dollar figures are just way too far apart. Mm-hmm. At that time, it was a $2.4 million offer with the high-density housing. And the, the land trust can only offer what the appraised value is at a million. Yeah. So this, this offer is a little bit less than that. It's reportedly it's $1.8 million. And then we're hoping that the appraised value for the um, land trust is going to be a little higher. But what I explained to Gary, then we could supplement that. We could raise some additional funds, mm-hmm. county money, state money, other private money, corporate money. You know, so that that kind of got him interested. He was really very concerned with this contract and the developer right right from the get go. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had some concerns, so he was looking for alternative resources. I was really hoping to bring this thing through while he was still here with us. He had cancer, and so he was fading. We we're hoping he's just. I, I, I wanted to give that to him before, yeah. but I think he, you know, the last time I saw him, we had a, you know, they they had a car cruise for him. And he came up and gave me a big hug and said, Tim, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Mm-hmm. And I said, Gary, I just I want to try to 
bring this home for you with us. I think he saw the solution. And then to, to hear from his wife, Joan, at the funeral that his dying wish was that the property go through the land trust um, back, you know, back to the park. Because that's when the, when the land trust buys property adjacent to the park, it will eventually get turned over to the park. Mm -hmm. So and then it will look like it does right now forever. Okay. And that's that's really what we want. Yeah, yeah. And how are you guys playing into the fight to preserve that land? What are you guys doing actively right well, now? Well, we you know, I I have written all the information that's out on the change.org. Um you know, that that's what I like to do. I like to write um, you know, I write the post for the Friends of the South Park Buffalo Preserve. Uh, people want me to write kids books and <laughs> stuff like that. And 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 all, you know, maybe when this stuff gets uh Straight not. I, I would love to spend some time doing that, but um, I just really want to get people involved. Um, you got to do it before it's too late. Um, you know, like like the old song, they're gonna, you know, tear down paradise and put up a parking lot, and we've got to do something before they start to tear it down, because mm -hmm. then you know, because then it's over. So it's really critical that people come to these meetings, you know, speak out, um, and then and then call uh, the you know the board of supervisors right to the right to the uh, plan commission, that's that's the critical part that people just need to get involved. Okay, okay. Yeah, and um, the the buffalo, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so fitting that you guys are trying to protect the buffalo and how it's tied into preserving that piece of land, you know, like you had mentioned in your post on, um, on your Facebook group, that uh, the buffalo is the antithesis of the wild of wilderness survival, exactly. of wilderness of survival yep. you know and back way in the early 1900s they were almost extirpated from the whole entire united states yes. that, you know almost went extinct yep. and um the initiative that south park took to bring them here you know preserve the species uh, it's pretty amazing and i think what you guys are doing right now to try and protect the you know the wild you know green spaces here is really really important um, would you be able to maybe define what it means for you guys to protect that land to protect the green space you of know how, how is that gonna affect well, you and well, in overall just South Park in general well how, how ironic though that we're talking about such an historic animal that witnessed the stripping of the land from uh, somebody they had a really good relationship with the Native American people and what that did and here we are now we're taking land away from them again. And no, it's not their land, but it's so close to their land, it's gonna have an impact. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I, I mentioned to you before, I spent some time talking to I think one of the foremost uh, American bison experts in the country, he's a professor at South, uh, South Dakota State, and there's just no question that that noise and vibration, everything that allows them to survive in the wild, their key sense of sight, their key sense of hearing. They can hear from miles away. They need to do that. It's a survival instinct. They can tell when, you know, what the noise is, how far away is it, where is it, and they can also feel by, you know, vibration. They've got to know when, you know, incoming storms are coming, stampedes, whatever, whatever it is, predators. So those same ultra developed senses is what is going to impact them here. And the bad part of them being here they can't move on. They, they, they are stuck between the fences. So the level of stress that's gonna, that's gonna come upon them, uh, it, it impacts their ability to, to have babies, it impacts the health of the babies, and it impacts their overall health. There's no question about that. Buffalo do not deal with stress well. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you, you've been out here, Tyler. Mm -hmm. These got people come out here to relax and just chill out when they're having a bad day because the buffalo are so calm and relaxing. Mm -hmm. So imagine putting that under stress. Instead of these beautiful bird sounds and everything else you hear out here, imagine the construction, the development, the logging, the chainsaws, all of that happening. And then just the development itself being this close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it, it, is, it is without stating gonna be a huge impact to the herd itself like you mentioned you know all of the adverse effects that, that that's going to have on the health the population things like that um what about the road here itself i mean you can hear some cars passing by um but it's you know one or two every couple minutes yes. I mean, it's it's nothing it's it, nothing crazy at this point well how is that going to affect well, this and, road right but here? if you if you come out here on the weekend um I think what our goal was since last year is to put these guys on the map. Mm -hmm. And we realized that we needed to do that. And, and I, I have to speak for the county because when we started introducing some concepts and concerns and ideas and thoughts 
there's a you know initially some pushback these guys have been here 100 years and it was like you know if it's not broke don't fix it so we had to convince them that if it wasn't broke i mean it, it could have it could be better mm -hmm. and so it is just incredible how they've stepped up um you know we have worked with andy beckley who's the director of all the parks you know sarah and Murado, who's the new county executive she's been a fan of the page before she was a county executive <laughs> so i know when she stepped in and she she texted me and we do text each other from time to time you know she asked what do we need and mm -hmm. um you know now now she's in a position to do something yeah so i, I think that's that's the critical that's a critical part but now these people are coming up here and everyone loves the Sesqui Drive. This is one of the most favorite areas of the park because of how nice it is. The jogging, the walking, the dog walking, mm -hmm. bikes, everything. And, of course, the buffalo. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And um, and how would that development – is is that development going to tie in directly here? Or is it is it going to be tied in more on um, Sleepy Hollow Road, which we'll get into in a minute? Yeah. Well, it's, it's – it, you know, it's definitely going to be Sleepy Hollow. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at where this is at – and I don't think people realize that – the whole way down here, all the way behind us, from way from way up here to way down there to where Bracken Ridge goes down to the Motto Airplane area, uh, that's all a part of that property. Mm -hmm. Everyone is assuming that that's part of South Park. And, and there's trails back there, people use them, but that is all private property and that is all at risk for, for loss here. Yeah, um, I, know, I know that I was doing a little bit of of research on like I, I have like mapping software and stuff that I use like whenever I go hunting and things like that and I can like measure line distances and stuff like that I believe that the boundary it shares like three quarters of a mile boundary yeah. um, with the park which is which is really crazy yeah um, it almost seems like it's more than that but yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a, at least that number mm -hmm. yeah okay now um, you know I mentioned Sleepy Hollow Road itself um, can you maybe dive into the information about that a little bit, the, the negative consequences on that road specifically, and, you know, even if you would like to go into the horse? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, because we're, we're concerned about the buffalo on this end, but we live on the other end. We, we live on Westchester, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we overlook that area. But I, I, I think more than that, it's driving down Sleepy Hollow. It's like you're going back in time. Uh, when we were relocating, we were in Chicago for 20 years, born and, born and raised in this area. But I think one of the decisions for us to come back here was just the tranquility of the park, how much more you know, developed the trails and everything else were. So that, that Sleepy Hollow Road is just an area that just shouldn't, shouldn't be developed. I mean, it's a dirt road. The horses have used that road for 100 years. Uh, the type of development uh, that that road is going to require to support 108 houses, I, I just don't think it's feasible. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 100-year-old-plus room and pillar mines back there. Uh, any vibration, you can see there's already surface, um, surface subsidence happening. Uh, the, 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 the need to widen that road as much as it's going to, especially with some of the areas where you have the drop-off, uh, it's just going to be astronomical expense. That's why if you look at the, what the developers proposing, it's simply to just, you know, repave it and widen it to 20 feet. Mm -hmm. It's 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 great to say that, but it's going to it's you know our, our roads in a very quiet cul-de-sac are 26 feet. Why in the world would that type of road, you know, carrying all those people the only way in and out? Why would anyone think that should be 20 or 22 feet? Yeah, and I think that. You, you say like 20, 22 feet. I think that people don't really don't realize how much that road would have to expand. How wide is it right now? Do you know? It's 14 feet. Yeah. 14 we, feet. We measured it. Mm -hmm. We measured all the area roads. We, we measured Stoltz Road. Yeah. I put my life on the line for Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that time. My son and I are out there measuring. People knew us going by like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> they said, I know what you're doing. I said, yeah, I mean, so when you drive on Stoltz Road with the traffic, with the bends, it seems like a narrow road. But mm -hmm. That's 24 feet. So this road is going to be substantially less than that. Yeah. So when you get to the right size of that road, probably, you know, when I talk to the Allegheny County Economic Development Group, Matt uh, leads that group, and, you know, he thought it would be something more along the lines of 27, you know, plus a shoulder on each side, plus a sidewalk. And I think the part that people miss, the horses have been using that road for, I don't know what the right number is, but I know it's over 100 years, mm -hmm. right? And so... That's the only way they can get on to the park on that side, to the trails on that side. Uh, so there has to be an accommodation. It's a longstanding 
Pennsylvania law, pre-existing non-conforming, they've got to make use. They have to have a horse trail back there. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I don't know what that number is. How wide does that have to be? Eight to 10 feet. There's have to be a railing. So when you start to look at how wide that has to be, um, I, I think this is going to become just a way too expensive proposition for the developer and, and on the on the townships part, and I think what they don't understand, what I've been trying to help them understand, normally a city, a town, a government, you can't sue a government, mm -hmm. right? But you know, uh, through um, they, you know, they they have certain immunities. Um, uh, sovereign immunity is what the actual term is. Sorry, I was stuck on that one. But if if you look at that, where they have a duty that that does not apply when it comes to roads and sidewalks especially in this particular instance, schools and hospitals also. But so why would, why would our township put everything at risk with a road that's not wide enough, with uh, the mine subsidence issues, and this all empties out onto a bridge that goes out to Stoltz Road that's very narrow, it's 18 feet. If you drive on that now, it's, it's hard to get through there. How are fire trucks, how are you know, all these vehicles are going to require for all this development and moving in, how are they going to possibly use that road? And again, where does the horse trail go? Mm -hmm. You know, so again, something that the Allegheny County Economic Development Group said, that bridge has got to be a new bridge and it's got to be wide. It's got to be as wide as the lanes of the road, you know, so, you know, 27 feet, I think was their number, plus the shoulder, plus the sidewalks, plus the horse trail. How wide do you think that bridge is going to look like the Liberty Bridge going across there? <laughs> but, I mean, where, what do you do? A horse is going to come there, and then where, where do they go? So there, there has to be an accommodation. If you don't make it an accommodation, it's a huge liability. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and especially with all the notes and information that has come into the township, if they, if they make a decision that doesn't take that into account and doesn't apply it, the liability is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, as an attorney, you know, anyone would love to find that information in the file that the Allegheny County De Economic Development Group recommended a certain width, and they decided against it. And then, and then there's an accident on the bridge, and somebody's having a heart attack up here in one of the houses, and the, you know, the the um, fire trucks, the ambulances can't get through. Imagine that liability mm -hmm. when they knew it was going to happen. They're 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 responsible for any known or foreseeable. I think we've all made it abundantly clear that there's a lot of foreseeable issues. So they, they lose that whole defense about foreseeability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, you bring so many good points to the table. Um, and you haven't even included this developer-specific history with flooding, with failed projects. You mind uh, yeah. diving into it's, that it's, a little bit? You know, it's a little disturbing. And, and uh, you know, listen, all developers have – litigation it's a very litigious world we live in mm -hmm. but it's it's the type of litigation that we've seen it's what's happened in wexford where uh you know 37 acres of wooded area w was cleared and supposedly there was going to be all the soil retention all the water retention you know the best standards and practices were going to be followed and they weren't mm -hmm. and it flooded you know completely wiped out a you know two million dollar house at the bottom of the hill if people can't foresee what's going to happen here and unfortunately you know based on the facts of that case that i understand in my opinion uh it certainly looked like that you know developer frank zocates misrepresented uh that he had those things in place in his deposition uh and it you know wasn't into the court proceeding you know so there's a 1.5 million dollar judgment and a five million dollar punitive award that that's very uncommon in real estate you know and it, it's it's something that the jury came back very very quickly so obviously this this guy aggravated the court and the jury in in that case to come back with that type of award mm -hmm. so uh, it was a little disturbing that our south park township folks said that um frank zocates is is involved in the south park villas and there weren't issues when we started looking and asking people there's been flooding issues since he cleared the land out there yeah. uh there's been there's been rescues there's been kids who can't stand at their school bus stop because it's flooded you see a, a river wa you know washing down the road why, what are we what are we doing here why are mm. we trying to protect somebody why not protect the residents not developers mm -hmm. yeah and um yeah, I mean, <laughs> a bunch of great, great points. And 
You know, when you, you look you, at this, Tyler, how do you pr- approve something like I, that this? Was, that was it's just be my like next question. I, I always <laughs> think of as putting things on a scale. That thing has tipped over, fallen off the table. Mm-hmm. There's so much. I'm trying to think of anything that uh, this is on the the you know the positive side, mm-hmm. other than well the you know the school district's going to get a little bit more money with with you know with the taxes. The the expense of doing the road, the expense of doing the bridge. You know where does that fall on? Mm-hmm. Uh, why, why are we spending all this money to incur? Even even more liability down the road. It just makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. And and, and like I said, that was going to be kind of my next question is you're bringing all of these points as to why this shouldn't happen. And then you also brought up a positive as, okay, it might bring some more tax dollars to the school itself. Um, but wouldn't those tax would might like, would you be able to kind of cover how the township would defend itself? Would that money come from taxpayer dollars to if they were to be course, sued? Of course they would. Mm-hmm. Of course they would. And you know how, how unfortunate that uh, you know that's that would be that would be the result because you know the the you know the liability is so foreseeable, mm-hmm. but the size of the liability, you know, somebody dying because of the emergency vehicle can't get through, you know, or a fire burns the house and kills everybody in the house because that fire truck could not get through because of an accident. Uh, you know, when I talked to the Allegheny County um, emergency response team, who was somewhat familiar, lived lived in Bethel Park, son, son here in South Park, so he's a little familiar with the area. And when we talked about a little more details, he says, Tim, I don't know how they're even thinking of doing something like that. Mm-hmm. One way in, one way out. There's no other way. Um, how, how, do, how does that happen? How yeah. do you get around that? Um, there, there's a lot of places to put houses. There's a lot of places to put developments that go right on the main roads that don't have all these issues and problems and questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you kind of sharing all that. Um, now, how, for the people that are listening, how can they get involved? How can they help you guys out? Well, I, I think if they can go out on change.org and look at the Sleepy Hollow, they can look at the Friends of the South Park Buffalo Preserve. They can look at the South Park Citizens Right to Know. Uh, we're kind of just all working together to put that information out there. Uh, you'll, you'll see information on where the, where the emails are that they can, you know, they can write to the Planning Commission. I mean, that's who's making the decision right now. And it's the Planning Commission who makes a decision, makes the recommendation. They're not a governing body, no doubt about that, but they make the recommendation to the governing body and they are the people who kind of look at the nuts and bolts at everything. So when they make the recommendation to the governing body, I don't know what it is. It's a 98, 99% of the time that governing body is going to just say, okay, that's what, that's what they've recommended. That's what we're going to follow. So that's what we realize now. This is mm-hmm. a decision-making uh, you know, capacity. If these guys approve the preliminary and then the final uh, you know, version and they recommend to approve that, it's going to go through. There's mm-hmm. nothing we can do at that point. Yeah. So what's the timeline there? I know that there is a there's a commission meeting. What is it? The 26th, correct? The 24th. 24th. The 24th. So yeah, April 24th. April 24th is the next one. I think there's a there's a, a board of supervisors meeting uh, May 13th is, is that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and if if they approve the, we're, we're obviously hoping that they're going to reject. I, I don't want to see this thing tabled again. We're mm-hmm. hoping based on everything that's presented with the Allegheny County Economic Development Group, everything that's that's being laid out there on the table, that they're going to look at this, take a hard look, take a hard look at this this person. Um, and you know what's what's really disturbing when you look at this group. Um, it's like the same group that travels from town to town. And I've gotten so much information from these other towns saying, you got to stop this group. You got to stop this group. It's the same, same group of professionals. It's like they, it's like the old West. They just travel from town to town, you know, taking advantage of of the town before they realize what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they're the system of checks and balances. Let's do a traffic study. The individual got up there with the traffic study and said the results of building 108 houses on a, off a dirt road that's going to be improved to whatever degree coming out onto an already busy Stoltz road is favorable. How, I mean, it's just insulting when, when you say that, but I guess, he can't say anything else or he's not going to be involved in the next project. Mm -hmm. And you just see this over and over again. Uh, You just really start to question of how this process even runs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I served on a board out out in Illinois where I lived. I would have never moved forward with any project unless a developer was standing there. I don't want to talk about somebody who's to somebody who's representing a developer, you know, because we would swear the developer in, ask him questions, and then he was responsible for that. Mm -hmm. We could hold him accountable for that. We never get to talk to the developer. 
Why is that? Makes no sense. It's just how they do it here. Okay. Uh, Wetzel and Associate is the landscape architect, whatever they are. Um, you know, they're the ones that represent. They're the ones that kind of carry the ball and do all the speaking and presentation. It makes no sense. Why the developer doesn't come, stand in front of the board, explain whatever issues he's had before, what he's going to build, what his vision, what his dream is. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the person that needs to be held accountable. He has to answer the questions of the residents. That's the person that should stand up and do that. Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree. Um, well, let's tie this up put a real nice bow on it um go check out the change.org i will link that in the video um also show up at the board meeting yep, right absolutely um that's at the south park township building yep correct um april, april 24th, 24th 7 p.m 7 p.m get there early get there early <laughs> parking's gonna be tough yeah there's gonna be a lot of people i'm yep. sure i know yep. there's a lot of people that are mad about it here in south park specifically and also for people that aren't in south park um, they can show up as well, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this is something that impacts everybody. It, it impacts uh, South Park Township. It certainly impacts uh, everyone who comes to the you know to the county park. Mm -hmm. Everybody's voice should be heard, and, and I think that's what that's what's on the line the line for South Park Township. How how are they going to be remembered as what what they did for the for the park, what they did for the township? everything it just i don't even know how to describe it tyler i mean if you if you wrote this as a script you know for for a movie of the week i don't know how it would ever be accepted because it's it's just too hard to believe that all these problems exist no solutions have really been presented mm -hmm. you know this you know the solutions are so half-assed you know pardon my pardon my french but how how does it even happen it just it's mind-boggling to the to the people that you talk to it yeah. makes no sense. It's a it's a huge problem. It's this huge avala avalanche about to hit, and it's like everybody can see it except, you know, a few of the you know elected officials and appointed officials mm -hmm. apparently. Yeah. Well, I um yeah I, I I hope you guys can feel the passion coming from you guys because um you know it's very apparent that it, that it means a lot and it obviously it means a lot to anyone that is even considering about visiting the park you know yes. thousands of people come here every single year tens of thousands probably um so if you are planning on making it out to south park if you care at all about the buffalo if you care about you know what the impact is going to have please check out the petition sign the petition show up if you can um Tyler, we, I mean, we can't thank you enough. I mean, we need to get the word out. Mm -hmm. Things like this definitely help us mm -hmm. get the word out. This is what's important. Just to see everybody come together, you know, people from the outside, people that we met, right? <laughs> <laughs> we met you. Uh, I mean, it's just awesome to be able to put this together and work together. I mean, that's what this country is really founded on. Yeah. Uh, you know, the people coming together. And it's really supposed to be the, our elected officials, our appointed officials are supposed to do the will of the people. I think mm -hmm. the will of the people has spoken. We are so tired of these uh, election promises where everything is about where green space is important. It's so nice to be so proximate to the county park. Uh, boy, you put those things together, that describes Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. that's what that's our cherished green space this is what needs to be saved yeah yeah very much agree in that in that regard um 1300 votes in count or 1300 signatures and counting 13,000 13,000 13,000 last year we had 3,000 this year we've had uh over over 13,000 the so. people have spoken then yes. all right well thank you tim thank you diane thank i really you. appreciate it appreciate it thank you tyler yeah